Now, Muhammad clearly wasn't a scholar or a historian. There are questions as to whether he was literate, illiterate, so he couldn't have done much historical research. Uh, he was born more than half a millennium after Jesus in a different country, so oral tradition, uh, reliable oral, oral tradition would have been out of the question. Uh, he didn't speak any of the relevant languages for examining the teachings of Jesus. Uh, 7th century Arabia was an oral culture, so most stories would be passed around by word of mouth. So the question here would be whether Muhammad could tell the difference between fact and fiction, and he simply couldn't. In Surah 18, Allah tells us that Alexander the Great traveled so far west, well, Dual Karnain, if you interpret that as Alexander the Great, uh, that he traveled so far west, he found the place where the sun sets. Now, not only can I guarantee you that Alexander the Great never found the place where the sun sets, we know that this was a popular story during Muhammad's lifetime. The story was even circulating in a Syriac work called The Glorious Deeds of Alexander towards the end of Muhammad's life. Earlier in Surah 18, we read about the companions of the cave, a group of people who supposedly uh, went to sleep and then woke up 300 years later. This myth goes back to Bishop uh, Stephen of Ephesus, and it's around the middle of the 5th century. According to Surah 19, Jesus began preaching as soon as he came out of Mary's womb. The story comes from the 6th century Arabic infancy gospel. The story of a bird teaching Cain how to bury his brother in Surah 5 comes from Mishnah Sanhedrin. The legend of Mary giving birth under a palm tree in Surah 19 comes from an apocryphal work called The History of the Nativity of Mary and the Savior's Infancy, uh, written in the early 600s, so this is Muhammad's lifetime. The account of Jesus giving life to clay birds in Surah 5 comes from a second century work called The Infancy Gospel of Thomas. It, it looks like Muhammad simply took every story that was popular during his life and gave it an Islamic twist and then included it in the Quran. What's interesting is that even the pagans, even the polytheists of Mecca were better at recognizing fiction than Muhammad was. We read in Surah 6 verse 25, when they come to you to argue with you, the unbelievers say, these are nothing but fables of the men of old. So these are the pagans saying, Muhammad, you don't, you don't really believe these stories, do you? Uh, David's point is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not intellectual because he uh, reported fables of the ancients. Uh, Sidney Griffith in his book, The Bible in Arabic, actually uh, replies to that and he shows that uh, the Bible has a very high quotient of biblical knowledge. What the Quran, uh, sorry, the Quran has a very high quotient of biblical knowledge. But what the Quran does do is that the Quran draws attention to what people already know and brings forward a moral lesson from that. The Quran is not there to teach people history, One but minute. to teach them how to think of that history and what theology should actually be based on that history. So the Quran is calling people back to one God with all of these uh, stories. There's nothing wrong with that.